for the Lord Jesus a wonderful round of applause. Jesus always leads us to victory, and today he will lead us to victory as well. In a little bit, we are going back to our study on Ephesians chapter 1, which we began in the previous service. This study has already become a blessing, and there are many good things here for us today. We become encouraged. Our spirit is renewed. I ask the Lord, Lord, let me be a prophet over there, but I'm also over here because I need to be. I need to learn the Word of God. I'm not going to waste any time. So let's go to Ephesians chapter, chapter 1. We are reading here and in the next few days how many times Paul the Apostle speaks about us being in Christ, in Him, in Jesus. It is a revelation that sometimes escapes us. We don't understand that from there we must extract what we need in our lives. Some theologians say that Isaiah is the most enlightened book in the Bible, especially in the Old Testament, and that Ephesians is the most enlightened book in the New Testament. We have lots of things to read. Let's start here with verses number 3 and 4. And this is what it says in the Bible. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, who has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places in Christ. My brethren, that's why Jesus said, without me you can do nothing. Everything that God had to give us, he has already given us. So today we must exalt him and praise his name. But why? Because he has blessed us with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly places. This is already a lesson for us. The healing that I need is a spiritual blessing. I hear the word of God, I believe, and a miracle happens. Sometimes it happens so fast that a person doesn't even realize it. I have seen God work so many miracles, and it's from one minute to the other that the person is healed. Like that lady whose testimony we have shown from an elderly lady who said, my brother, I couldn't even comb my hair alone. She was so happy because she could do this, so then I asked her, and what about your cane? Well, I need this cane to walk. No, you don't. I felt from God and she started walking. She threw aside the cane and started going like this to everyone there. But how is it that something like this can happen? If a doctor wants to rebuild an atrophied muscle, he can do that. But it takes a lot of physiotherapy, a lot of medication. I don't know, hot or cold pads, I'm not sure. The treatment may work, but it takes time. But God heals in the blink of an eye. One minute later, the person is already doing what they couldn't do before. She's walking normally. It's a spiritual blessing. But this ulcer right here in my leg, it's, it's eating up my flesh. But once you receive the blessing, I think it was in Curitiba once when Pastor Jaime was, he said, don't close your eyes, brethren. I was really impressed. I wasn't there, but someone told me. People kept looking at it, and the ulcer started healing itself. I mean, when, when God commands, he will do it. So it's a spiritual blessing. And he hasn't given us one blessing, no. He has given us many blessings. Where has he blessed us? In the heavenly places. The revelations contained in the word of God. And he has blessed us how? In Christ Jesus, who said, Abide in me, and I in you then the problem is solved. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, then you will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. So we have to be in Christ. And what is it to be in Christ? We are not going to be able to read the Bible and dive into it because that's impossible. How is it that we are in Christ through God's revelation? The moment that the word sheds light on your spirit and you believe, then you extract, you pull out from Christ the power that makes you become healed, like the woman who had the hemorrhage. When she heard about Jesus, she had a condition that no doctor had been able to heal, and she felt from God that if she just touched Jesus, she would be healed, and she stood firm in the word. When I preach about this passage, I do sort of some role-playing so people can understand how difficult it was for her to get close to Jesus because Jesus was there physically. At that time, there wasn't telephone, there was no radio, there was no television to announce where Jesus was passing. She had to ask someone, is he passed here? No, is he passed there? No, there was no easy way. She had to go out and look for Jesus. Has he been here yet? Yes, and he went in that direction. No, he hasn't been here yet. Maybe he went that way until she finally heard he is in such and such a place and she went. There was a crowd surrounding Jesus. 
Everyone wanted to be near him. And she wasn't supposed to touch anyone because Moses' law said that if a woman with hemorrhage touched someone, the person would become unclean. But the Holy Spirit said to her, if you touch his robe, she clung to that word. She stood firm in Jesus. When he turned and his robe flew around, she managed to touch it. And at that moment, the power of God moved into action. When you see his robe flying, when revelation comes, when you feel that it is the time, brethren, at work, you can even be in the restroom. You can be anywhere at that moment believe, unless you are doing something wrong. As far as godly things goes, you can rest assured that if you are in God's presence, you are in Christ. At that moment, you touch his robe, and when you do that, the power of God will heal you. How is it that today, many times, it's not necessary to wait for the moment of prayer. You receive a revelation, I receive it, Lord. And there is this thing, he has already blessed us. He has already, it's not that he will bless us, or that he might bless us, no. He has already blessed us, but I didn't deserve it. Glory to God, because it's not merit-based. If it were merit-based, we wouldn't have anything. But he has already blessed us with what? With every spiritual blessing. I need to become healed. It has already been provided. I need forgiveness already provided. I need a solution in such and such an area of my life. It's already been provided. Let's read verse 4 now. There are three amazing revelations here. Just as he chose us in him before the foundation of the world, before the foundation of the world, God already knew everything, and he chose us. Not only did he appoint us, those who accept my son's sacrifice, these people will have their sins forgiven. They will have power over the evil one. These people will not have anything hindering uh, my power from working in their lives. Just as he, this has no explanation, it's a mystery, I can't explain it, don't ask me to try. Just as he chose us in him, in Jesus, everything is in him. He chose us in Jesus, he is going to do the work, and those who believe will be blessed. He chose us in him before the foundation of the world. How are we going to learn all these things in eternity? How it all happened? What did he do this for? That we should be holy godly people and without blame before him in love. What is it that God wants me to be? What is it that God wants you to be? Holy. Oh, Dr. Suarez, there's no way. If there is no way for you to be holy, then I have bad news for you. You're going to hell. Brethren, believing is different. Dr. Suarez, I'm a terrible sinner. You don't know the power that the devil has over me. You don't know what the power of God can do for your life. Where sin abounded, grace abounded much more. There is no such thing, brethren. He has already chosen us in Christ before the foundation of the world that we should be, it says very clearly here, that we should be holy, goodly people, people who are set free from drug addiction, from prostitution, from dishonest practices, and from everything that is evil and without blame before him in love, free from blame, completely innocent, without any reparation at all. And when did he do that? Before the creation of the world. And how did he do that? In love, not under the whip. I'm going to punish myself now. I am worthless. I'm a scumbag. No, stop that, brethren. Lord, I am the worst among all sinners. If anyone claims to be a scumbag, I am worse than him. But I want to experience this. Because you did that, and it is my right. First thing that Paul preached. Let's go to Corinthians again. In the previous service, we already saw that. 1 Corinthians 15.3 For I delivered to you first of all. Paul knew that this was a matter of utmost importance. First and foremost. For I delivered you first of all to that which I also received. The Holy Spirit, when Paul became converted, immediately the Holy Spirit taught him, you have to have this blessing. And I am asking forgiveness to those to whom I've never preached this. The first thing that you really need to know is to know that, that Christ died for our sins, for my sins, for your sins, for everyone's sins. That's all we need to know. God has supplied us with the remedy. Now, if I have a moral weakness, or if I have a physical weakness, any weakness at all, if I'm a sinner, an unclean person, a wicked person, a person who does not have boundaries, Jesus, please forgive me. You died for my sins. 
This remedy cleanses me from anything evil and will cleanse you as well. This remedy will make you holy and blameless. And now let's go back to Ephesians. And how am I going to become holy and without blame? In love. It's not in hatred. It's not under the whip. It's in the love that God has for you. Let's compare God's love. A pastor friend of mine said this, and I liked his words. Let's say that man's love, uniting the love of all of mankind for the Lord God, it's a, a, a drop of water, a tiny drop of water. And God's love is the ocean. That's too big. No, we're talking about billions of drops of water in the ocean. That's the love God has for us. It's not our love for him. It's God's love. Paul says here in Ephesians chapter 1, verse number 4, Just as he chose us in him, in Jesus Christ we were chosen. We're no longer candidates. We have been chosen. The election has already taken place. We have taken our positions that we should be. This is God's purpose for your life, that we should be holy, godly, and without blame. Blameless, completely innocent before him before the one who is holy, the one who is all-powerful, before him whom no one can look at. There's a hymn from the Baptist church that I used to sing as a boy, and it went like this. If the bright sun can blind us when we look at its blinding glare, he who will contemplate, he who created the sun and the universe, before this being, we have to live in love, brethren, not in hatred, not in condemnation. But I am worthless. Have you done anything wrong? Take the path of repentance for the love you have for your soul and cleanse yourself completely. But Dr. Suarez, I will go to jail. My wife will leave me. Let her do that. My husband will leave me. Let him go. You will be prepared to enter the kingdom of heaven. Is it worth it to enjoy 10 years of marriage, 50 years of freedom, if you will have to spend all of eternity in hell if you don't do that? Cleanse yourself completely. I will cleanse myself. I don't care how much it costs. I will not leave one single part of me dirty. I will cleanse myself completely. And then you will live before the Lord God in love. That's it. There's no condemnation, brethren. There will be no devil saying, but you did that, so you are my slave. Devil, actually, my old self did that, but I am a new creation. Take your hatred and try to enter my life. You won't be able to because now I am before God in love. I abide in him and he abides in me. We are together. This will make of you a person who is different. And that is what God wants you to understand today. First of all, let's go back to Paul. Oh, Paul, if one day I meet you, I will give you a great big hug. <laughs> and one day I will meet him. For I delivered to you, first of all, that which I also received. What did he do? What was this important thing? That Christ died for our sins. This is not just a statement. This is one of the greatest statements that one can have in their lives. God supplied us with the remedy. You are not holy. I am not. No one is. We all need this. Did you trip and fall? Go and take the remedy. What for? Christ died for our sins. Jesus Christ died so that we should be holy and without blame before him in love. Walking in love, standing firm in love, breathing in love. Oh, my brethren, looking at others with the love of God, not the kind of love that is full of lust, desire, carnal love, demoniac love. No, I'm talking about the kind of love that will make you a holy person. Amen, brethren? And now let's go to the real life drama for today. I had a hard time moving around. My back was constantly, uh, constantly aching. My arms, my legs, there was a terrible pain. Sometimes my neck hurt too. I would take medication. I wasn't able to do many things. To walk, neither could I sit down on my own. My whole body ached. My, my hands hurt. I couldn't grab things. I couldn't hang the laundry. I couldn't pull up, couldn't pull up the blanket. I couldn't fix my own pillow. 
Making the bed in the morning was an impossible task. She just couldn't grab things with her hands, you know. When she tried to hold the glass, she would feel pain in her hand. Sometimes she couldn't even dry her own hair with the dryer. Many times I had to help her do that. Getting up was difficult for me. Sitting down was difficult for me. Lying down was difficult. It was getting worse and worse each day and I was becoming increasingly sad because the fact was that I was becoming more and more dependent on others. She saw many doctors, you know. She did a lot of exams, but the pain was getting worse. At some point, the doctor said there was no cure. I went to the trauma specialist and she asked me to do a tomography. The result came back as arthrosis in my spine. The doctor said you will not get better. You will get worse. She said I would do physiotherapy for the rest of my life. I really felt like crying, but I said, no, I'm not going to cry. Because for God, nothing is impossible. At that time, Jenny watched the Faith Show program on TV and was attending the Grace of God Church. I would watch Dr. Sawadis and I thought he was a very intelligent man, a very special man. I'd hear him preach always, 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 and I read all his books. It was very good because then I started to learn about the Word of God, you know, more in depth. She took several courses at the church. Her faith grew a lot and she became a sponsor of the Faith Show. I felt the need to help, you know, the same way as I had received help as I had the opportunity when I was in need of help. Dr. Sawadis was there, right, speaking to me. One day, Jeanne no longer could bear the pain, so she cried out to Jesus, seeking for her healing. I was going to take a shower, but I decided to sit down on my bed. I turned on the TV and started crying. Then Dr. Sawadis started talking. He did the prayer of faith to heal people's spines, to heal arthrosis, to heal arthritis, you know. And I pleaded with God along with Dr. Suarez in tears. And from that moment on, I was able to move around like I, like I hadn't done in a long time. She started to pray with Dr. Suarez and felt it was her moment. I felt God's anointing upon me. I felt happy, you know, for not having given up. And gradually I started to do all the things that I could not do before. Today, I can do everything that I couldn't do before. I can lift up my arms, I can bend my arms, I can close my hands. Today, I feel very well. I don't feel the need to take any medication. She could do almost nothing at home, and now she does even heavy cleaning. She blow dries her own hair. Her life completely changed. She was born again. I thank God every single day because now I can move around, I can have a normal life, I can do all things that I need. I'm alive because of God, because of His endless mercies. I believe with all my heart that Jesus can do all things and He is wonderful. There is always a happy ending. Our real life drama is very different. No one betrays, no one kills, no one steals, no one does evil. The end is always happy because that's what God does. Today I will pray to heal arthritis, arthrosis, rheumatoid arthritis, rheumatism, tendinitis, bursitis, any condition that you have, I will pray in the name of Jesus. So stay with us just a little bit longer. My brethren, this is what we are doing. We are bringing people to Jesus Christ and a remedy that has already been provided. All you have to do is take it. Because Paul taught us first and foremost, which we are learning here, that Christ died to pay for our sins. So this problem is no longer an issue for us. But I still have sin in my heart. Then get rid of it. How do you do that? Follow the ritual of sanctification, of repentance. Do not stop and feel remorse. Oh, I shouldn't have done that. <laughs> That's not going to help at all. Lord, thank you. I know what I did was wrong, and I'm here to get things right. So do that once and for all, and God will give you the victory in the name of Jesus. Now let's go to the question and answer segment. In the name of Christ. Dr. Soares, I would like to know, how can we help a family member who is an alcoholic? A family member who is an alcoholic or addicted to any chemical substance or addicted to pornography, addicted to laziness and wrong practices, this is all work of the devil. And there is no other way to solve this except for the revelation of God's word. In this revelation given to you by the Lord, you must stand firm and if you haven't received this revelation to find God, say, Lord, please show me. I want to have a basis to believe. And when you speak to this family member, explain to them 
that the remedy is available through the Word of God. In the Word of God, listen to what God is revealing to you because that is your remedy. There is not a single case when God is going to say, oh, this case has no solution. This one's too difficult. All things are possible to our Lord God. When you receive the Lord's revelation, my brother, my dear sister, you can believe it. Rest assured, even if it takes some time, the devil will try to make you give up. I will overcome this in the name of Jesus. Joshua said, as for me and my household, we will serve the Lord. Paul said, believe in the Lord Jesus and you and your household will be saved. The remedy is already available to your entire family, to everyone in the world, to you who are watching me right now. What is your weakness? What are you ashamed of? What is keeping you subject to the devil? What is allowing the devil to enslave you? Speak to Jesus now and he will make you truly free. Let's go to the second question. Dr. Suarez, telling the truth is not always an easy thing to do. What should we do to overcome this weakness? No, we must speak the truth always. You don't have to open your mouth and go around telling people all of your secrets. If an indiscreet person asks you something, say, what makes you think this is your business? You don't need to tell, but the truth you must always speak. It doesn't matter that I as a pastor, brother, tell me this, pastor, I'm sorry, but it's none of your business. I respect you, but I won't tell you what is in my heart or what's not. You don't have the right to break into my heart. Neither is my faith under your dominion. We spoke about this the other day. No one has control over your faith. No one has control of our intimacy. But now the truth, we must always tell the truth. But if I don't tell a little lie, I won't sell my product, then don't sell it. Go do something else. You have no skills to be a salesperson. A good salesperson works within the truth. A good professional works within the limits of truth. He who has at any moment to tell a lie or use deceit is not acting correctly. They are in a function that, that is not right for them. So here's what you have to do. Do I have to lie? Forget about it. If it's from the devil, forget it. I want to be in the truth in the name of Jesus. When you feel your tongue tickling to tell a lie, think again, I won't. I won't tell a lie in the name of Jesus. He who speaks the truth, the Bible says very clearly, declares righteousness. The truth is completely harmless, brethren. The truth can only do you good. The devil doesn't want you to speak because he wants you to be in his hands. Speak the truth always. Oh, I can't remember. You liar, of course you remember. Let me see, I think I'm not sure about this. Go fool someone else. Perhaps a six-year-old will believe you, but not someone who is 16 or 26, 36, 46, 56, 66. They won't believe you. <laughs> we are no longer that naive. And now it's time for the Open Your Heart. Dr. Suarez, I was born in the gospel and the worst thing I ever did was to stray from God's path. I committed adultery and I don't even know exactly how it happened. The whole thing is a blur and I regret it very much so I asked God to forgive me and he set me free. But now I need to ask forgiveness to my husband because I love him dearly and I don't want to lose him. However, once he told me he would never forgive me if I cheated on him. I want to do God's will. I want His Holy Spirit to abide in me, Dr. Suarez. Please help me in prayer. I don't want my husband to leave me. Please give me some advice. Well, that's a tough one, sister. Why do people do that, right, brethren? Now you must be brave and you have to tell your husband. You shouldn't have done it in the first place. Everyone has to think before doing such a thing. Do you know the path? Sometimes we act like fools, brethren, but we know that there is no other way except to walk in the light. So why would we walk in darkness? Have you fallen? Get out of the darkness. But what if I'm willing to pay the price? Then you will pay the price. You have made the wrong decision. When a doctor who was supposed to remove an appendix removed the patient's arm, <laughs> it's useless to say he made a mistake. Oh, I didn't mean it. You didn't mean it. It's written there, and you said it was the appendix yourself. You went there, cut off the patient's arm. Now you have to pay the price. Why did you do that? It is true. So we have to take responsibility. Do you want to go to heaven? Yes, I do. You fell, now you're in the hands of the devil and he starts making you feel sorry for yourself. You become the victim. But I made a mistake, I didn't mean it, but you did it. A person who did wrong has to be responsible, uh, especially if someone else got harmed, they have to make things right, otherwise they won't be forgiven. This is written in Luke chapter 17, verse number three. 
it says the following, if your brother sins against you, go and rebuke him. And if he repents, forgive him. What if he doesn't repent? Don't forgive them. We must not take forgiveness for granted. This is serious. This is really terrible. And I know you are grieving, but the only solution is to take the remedy and not to fall into depression, brethren. Only those who want to do that. Because if we are able to confess our sins, but confessing also includes making things right with the party who was cheated on, who was dishonored, who was robbed. God is faithful to forgive all of our sins, and here comes the best, to cleanse us from all of our iniquity. Then you will have a clean slate. Well, today I will be able to start over. I will rise up and God will be with me. The devil will continue tempting. No, be careful. You won't make enough money, this and that. And instead of keeping your eyes on Jesus' face, you start listening to the father of all lies. You already fooled me once. And so now I will walk with the light. I will cleanse myself completely. If you don't cleanse yourself, he will bring diseases. He will bring problems into your life, problems everywhere. What happens to a person whose immune system is good? Do they catch a cold? No, they don't. The virus comes and goes, but some people catch a cold every month, every week. Whenever the weather changes, they're like an old goat, sneezing all the time, sneezing all the time. The throat becomes swollen and problems come up. If they had a strong body, a strong immune system, then the virus wouldn't affect them. A Christian who faces problems every day, they trip here, they trip there. Pray for me, I can't take it. You can mark my words. Their heart is not well, because if they are standing firm in Christ, my brethren, no evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling, or else you could throw your Bible away. Jesus, I didn't know what I was saying. He who doesn't know doesn't believe. No evil shall befall you, nor shall any plague come near your dwelling. God's angels are given charge over you to keep you and all those who belong to him. Let's pray to the Lord now. God, thank you for your message today. You have made us people who have power over evil and not people who are subject to the devil every day, telling lies and deceiving and jumping into the mire. But yet these people claim to love you, God. Have mercy on us. We want once and for all it doesn't matter the price we will have to pay, and we will pay it with pleasure because, Father, in the name of Jesus, we want life that is eternal. Look at all those who are praying now, who are asking, who are pleading with you, God, this person who is unable to bear this situation any longer. May this person receive strength from heaven. I'm going to break the power of the devil over this person's life now. Devil, your power is now broken. Get out in the name of Jesus. And you say, thank you, Jesus.